The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on the uh, 15th day of July. I had a question about in the Chapman wave, how come in the dollar um, daily, uh, sorry, the euro dollar, dollar currency pair daily chart from the high that was made back on the 25th of June at 1.1412, We've only, we, why is this only a, a trough B and not a trough A, oh, sorry, a trough C? And the question is actually a good question, but you remember the, the, in the, on the way down, the bar that has a big spike from the low cannot be a leg until you, on, this, on the right side of that low bar, you make a higher low bar. You have to make a trough before you can actually count the wave. So on the downside, you're going up here. You're going up on the uh, 24th, 1.140, and then you go to 1.141 on the 25th of June, and that bar pulls back, and then the following bar has a lower, so it has a higher low. So you can't start. You haven't, this is the first time on the right side of this, you can, you've got to, a peak at the top because there's a lower high bar. From now, you can start counting your troughs. But wait a minute, the bar next to it, the low here on the 26, uh, 20, yep, 26 is 1.1391, is the high, 1.134 is the low, and the very next bar is exactly the same. So it's a parallel. And then the following bar is even higher. So that, you can't start your count until you go underneath the last low bar, and that's 1.13816 of the 27th, and then all of a sudden on 20, no, it's the 1st of July, you start, boom, you go down, you go way below, you go to 1.128. So this is the bar that goes leg A down, lowercase l, lowercase a, leg A down. This is a floating letter, and then it stops dead right here on the 3rd of July. Why? Because the very next bar has a higher low. 1.128 goes to 1.127. So this is, and then the following one has a parallel low as well, 1.12074, and it's parallel the next day on the 5th. Uh, oops, yep. That's right. No, it isn't. Oh, in fact, it's even more. For, oh, uh, yep, that's right. So this is a leg B. I, I chose the wrong one to discuss because this is what was asked, but it's so complicated with all these zeros. One, two, three, four, five, five digits after the decimal. Wow. Okay. So this is in leg B, and then it goes to trough B because there's a higher low, and now it's in a gray leg A, and it's just stuck in this range at 1.125. All right, let's get back to the nitty gritty. The nitty gritty says the Dow is down 35. Now, what's interesting about this particular move is that we've gone to a leg D with a high today of uh, 27,364.69. If tomorrow, and I suspect this is what I'm saying to subscribers, I think there's going to be between uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, I think there's going to be a lower high. I think. I don't know. I think. And that's merely that what that's going to do is make a peak D. But have a look at this, and I've been discussing this for a while. I'll do this more because I've decided I'm going to do a lot more of the technicals live here because people just keep asking questions. They haven't had a webinar on this for a long time. Maybe I'll do it all day one, one of these days. But i uh, just been real busy, so let me do this uh, right now. In real time, if we're looking at the Dow, look what it's going to take. You see, the, uh, forget these automated resistance, 27.296 was the one generated Friday. We've gone above that. That just very short term is now support. If you go under it, that could mean something. But look at the distance between the price. This is one of the, the, the highest prices it's had since this big bump up on the 21st of June, where the down went to 26,907. Look how far away it went from the green line, the nine period moving average, and the black line, the 14. Hey, wait a minute. Look at this. 
this is where we are right now. It's not quite as high, but it's pretty high. And it says, yeah, we could have some kind of a dip coming up right now. But you see this fast-moving average, the 9, cross the slower-moving average of the 14, going from support of 20, 27,000 down to the support of 26,780. Wow. Look what has to happen. The Dow has to really turn down very sharply. It has to then close underneath the 27,000 level. Then it has to go deeper below the 26,780 at that point, 26,770s, to be able to see this green line actually turn down and maybe reverse. It's going to take at least another, why do I say at least another four or five sessions? Look, when it was so good right here. In the highs, that you see the resistance levels that were generated, Chapman Wave automated resistance levels. Look what happened um, when you got to the high of 26,695 and 26,680 um, back on the 23rd or so of um, 23rd of April. And then remember, we I got I generated by the 120-minute chart a sell signal right here on this bar the day before the. Um, recovery high and we hold that position taking some of all the way down and then reversing to the long position in this candle this little doji candle of the third of june and then look how long it took it took one two three four five five six bars going from the twenty four thousand uh four hundreds all the way to the twenty six thousand one hundreds before it actually generated a crossover so this is a very slow moving average this is really where you talk about lagging indicators it's just a confirmation thing for me but it's just another way of doing it which i've done for decades and, and i just have articulated in a different way and that's what i'm saying that unless there's some really bad news this is the start of a, an attempt to try to make some kind of a shorter term top you just need another new high and you've already generated extra extra upside oomph all right enough with that so um, we're looking at that. Let me just quickly do this before we go to the break. S&P has support now. Keys, of course, the upside is anywhere. But let me just go to the support. Am I, oh, I'm generating it on the wrong. Uh, there we go. SPX.X. Uh, S&P has extended its leg F. It could be an alternative count, but I'm calling it F for now. NACD is just, it's still good, but it hasn't yet crossed negative. And the stochastic is still very strong at 93%. So all of this is still very positive. You'd have to go from 23,010 right now to under 29.73 to really generate some kind of a sell signal, maybe a sell mode. QQQ right now, the Qs are 193.62, another all-time high extended. That move is also in a kind of a leg F at 103, 194 round number high, 193.63 right now. Hey, you remember? This is interesting because the SPY made a round number the other day, but then it actually exceeded. Did it really exceed that? Was that? SPY has exceeded. It's gone to 301.13. Yes, it has. So these round numbers right now are not really working their magic. I, IWM, which is the Russell 2000, be much weaker. Look at this. Ter terrible candle. Didn't go anywhere close to even the recovery highs recently. 154.96, not very good. Underneath 153, that's going to be a real problem. And you've got gold right now trading up 0.9 at 14.13, stuck in this range. Remember, rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And the dollar's the same thing, except it's a little bit holding at the right here, at the 96. 96 level, we've been here before, up 30. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Gate Conditions out. Dow's down. If you're 30. not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk.
If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So there's a the couple of things I want to look at. I'll just finish this off and then we can do that. Crude oil, <coughs> down 36. Double top peak D here for the last three days. Remember, we're looking at this, and it achieved what we were looking at was for a peak D. And what I said is in the weekly chart, it looks to me like this is just stuck in the range, in the middle of the range, and it could go right back into the trading range in the 58s. So unless crude oil actually charges into the 62s right now, I just think it's kind of stuck. And uh, waiting for that peak D. So the question is, it's the same pattern we're looking at in different indices. Question here came to me. How are we looking at D in the IWM in the weekly chart in the in the day in the weekly chart of the crude oil? It's made a peak C at uh, 67.03. Once you're stuck in a trading range, you can stay in that trading range for quite a while. So yes, I do believe at some point crude oil will go into the uh, 60 66s, maybe 67s. But just for now, I think it's just kind of stuck. Stuck is the watchword because it's very select, this move. The Dow is really leading the pack, and that's very important. Look, IWM, same sort of keep the eye on the weekly pattern, same kind of pattern. Yeah, it's going to be a while. More likely, we're looking at an arch formation. We've done that rising wedge formation. Now we pull back. Now this particular arch is into the second iteration. So let's just do this. And it's going to be a little while, I think, before we actually see leadership in the Russell 2000, the small caps. And that'll only start if the uh, IWM trading at 155 right now is able to trade. Really, I don't think trade by uh, one pop in a weekly chart. It needs to hold above one, one, 158.80. If it can close above that for two consecutive weeks, I think we've made a bit of a turn in the IWM. Let's go to the uh, question I had. Okay, this goes to an area that I don't usually follow, but it was a good question, and there was a there was a reason for the question. So it's the other basil. Oh well, yep. Congratulations, uh, Walter, on the wedding. Very exciting, uh, and uh, may the uh, couple uh, have great happiness. So, 
I would appreciate your opinion on Trading Friday on two U.S. uranium miners. I've been following the uranium sector and the issue where a couple of U.S. uranium producers called on President Trump to look at setting quotas to require a certain portion of the U.S. nuclear power industry to purchase uranium from domestic sources. Okay, so let's look at the chart. We're looking at the EUC, I believe it was EUC, which is... UEC, I believe it must be. It's uranium, UEC. There we go. So the UEC, as he said, had a very, very sharp decline from a... Yeah. So um, he nibbled on Friday on that very sharp sell-off. Um, probably just nerves because of the wedding and you want to do... Uh, Oh, it was a wedding Saturday, but because you just want to do, get your fingers uh, moving along to to uh, get your mind off the coming event. Anyway, so it's trading at 1.10 right now. It's up 0.03. It had a low. It had a high on Friday of uh, 1.45. A dollar 45 has a little problem. Pulls back to 91 cents. So you got in, and now you're saying, all right, what what's next? So. Let me do this. I would not have two of them. So look at the chart pattern. This did make a peak D in the daily. It went through the rectangle formation. It was the rectangle formation right here. You can see uh, it, it broke down below this kind of trading band. Let me show you what that means. In the euro dollar currency pair, look at this trading band. Since this morning's pop and drop, where it started to fall almost immediately, the E-mini, S&P E-mini, Trading now at 3,015, had a high of 3,023. Opens at 3,015. Um, spikes. Uh, I can't remember if this was the earlier one during overnight session. Anyway, whatever it is, you see this rectangle formation. So since 9:30, this is now three hours. It's been in this trading band between three, just in the 3,017 to the 3,030s. A four-point trading range. Just nothing after Friday's big move. In fact, after Friday's big move, uh, we could have, uh, we certainly could have some kind of a, a pullback of the actual last hour's gain, and that's what I said should happen today. But if the Dow really goes down to minus 60s or so a little later in the day. I think that maybe we could pull back a little bit more. Peaky in the den says, forget about uranium. Tell him to get a prenup, <laughs> Basil. No, it wasn't for him. <laughs> it was for his daughter. Uh, yeah, so uh, what we're looking at is uh, the UEC. I'm going to answer this in, in a different way to, to what I normally do. Normally I'd, normally I'd say, you know what, especially if it's something that I don't actually follow and... Um, but it has a pattern that is interesting. The UUP has gone almost to the day's low of 192 that was made on Friday. Friday is trading at $3 and about 12 cents. The next thing you know, it's down to 1.90. 1.90. Let me give you the exact figure. So it opens at one. And it opens at 3.08. No, it opens at 3.07, goes to 3.08, and then plunges down to 193, no, 19 closes at 193. It's trading at 193 right now. Here's what I'm going to say. I, If you want, I would choose one. Energy Fuels Inc. is the UUUU, trading at 1.93, un unchanged right now, but down 0.13. How can it be unchanged, but down 0.13? Whatever it is, it's a down at, at this level. This is the one that scares me a little bit because it had a really good move up into the fours. The technicals were good. And even though the technicals are really not bad at all in the monthly chart, the way it's crossing negative right now, it just says to me, maybe this is the one that you got the greatest gamble. Now, when you go to the UEC, that's been in a trading band, and it's a little bit different that it's still back in the above the monthly low, uh, under one, it's at 1.11, at this particular time, it's had a low today of 1.10, at a high of 1.21. I like this one better. So I'm going to say to you, if you can get out, you can have a little patience to say, you know what, there's bound to be a little bit of, of a bounce in the UUU, UUUU, four U's. Um, and if that does happen, 
I said, you know, just kind of get out of most of your position there. But as a longer term risk play, because I think you're right. I think politically, this is going to come in and out of, it, it always does, in and out of mention. I'm not even calling it favor. I'm just calling it mention. The moment it gets mentioned, it's so low that somebody's going to do some buying. So it's the UEC, the Uranium Energy Core, that I'd be preferably, that's where I would put, now, you know and I know, and we're both looking at something a couple of months down the road with at any point you're expecting some kind of a pop, and that pop could go to 1.80. You'd be lucky if it goes to the 200 period moving average of 2.01 in this particular pop-up. If it happens, it's going to have to have some kind of a story. Uh, and also mines, Peaky says in the den, uh, vanadium, vanadium used to strengthen steel. So I don't, I don't know much about that, but I am saying to you, as a spec, that's the one that I'd probably stay with. But you've got to treat it as a spec. You've got to be prepared like an option to say, I can lose almost all that money. But as a spec, that could be a nice, a nice trade. I'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're looking at IYT, which is the, the uh, I, this is the iShares Transportation Average ETF. 191.48 was the high on July the 1st. Pulls back. Has a rally on Friday. It's 191.68, 20 cents higher, and the high today is 191.68, same thing. 
I've got this as a leg F. It could turn out to be a new, brand new start of a buy mode. In fact, I then would take it as an F uh, if there's a, a lower high and then a higher high. They could start a new leg C, make this peak D, the D that pulls back sharply. But usually when the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, doesn't cross negative sharply, but just deflects higher, <coughs> there's a good chance you're in, in a continuation pattern. And this is EF and this is F. And right here is where you would expect some kind of a pullback, just a pullback, doesn't have to be a major decline. And then we can decide whether or not this is going to recycle to the upside. But as a as a correlation between the Dow 30, this is Dow theory, and that's why I'm saying there is no real Dow theory anymore. And the transports confirming, this is just saying transports are okay. I mean, look, you've got uh, Prime Day today, Amazon, they're going to do fabulous. I mean, I don't know, the numbers are going to be extraordinary, I'm sure. But Federal Express is up six cents at the lower end of its range, having been up in the 270s at some point in 2018, and then 150 in December bounces to 190s, and now it's trading the 167. This is really so. Amazon is doing something very different, and that is impacting them, and that includes the airlines. So you've got Amazon today down six. So this is what I'm thinking. I think the numbers for Amazon are going to be extraordinary. That is that the number of people for Prime Day, and I believe it's Prime Days, is going to be quite extraordinary. But I would not be surprised from what I've seen just anecdotally and what in newspapers and all that stuff, that the actual money that Amazon makes here is not in proportion to the number of people that actually activate some kind of... Uh, some kind of purchase of purchases, and that the items themselves could, you might find that uh, they're not the big items because so much of people are now expecting discounts everywhere. We're in fact commoditizing the retail industry just about right, right across the board, except maybe in a Bentley or something. Even there, I saw something for sale recently that was way lower than the uh, original price. That's unusual. So when I look at Amazon, I think that's going to give us such a lot of information, which I said to subscribers, between that and the semiconductors for completely different reasons. Semis right now are up 58 cents at 114.83. This is actually quite nice action considering what's going on today and after Friday. But it hasn't taken out the 115.96 high of the first in a cup formation. And we'll see if the right side... In other words, what we're looking at is on the daily vertically, we're looking at July the 7th right there with the MACD really strong and still strengthening. Stochastic very good at its high over the last weeks up there. On balance volume was good. And now you've got on balance very, volume very high, potential little doji candle. You might get a double top with the right shoulder failure if the MACD turns down. So I, I think we're at a very important couple of days. I said Monday through Wednesday is going to be so informative. You know, Boeing might be doing a little bit for the Dow. At this point, it's down 3.33. So it's cutting cutting away from some of uh, some of the action in the in the overall market. But that's not three dollars is not such a big big move. Um, if Boeing starts to move down eight or nine, that's going to be more serious. Or if it bounces eight or nine, so excluding Boeing. If we go to areas like the oil, the multinational oils, there's your leg D. Finally, talk about C1, C2. Had a, a subscriber talk about something, and I, I want to mention this right now because it reminded me I almost forgot to talk about it. And that is in the positions that we have for my opening call subscribers, we've had a lot of, I mean, up 20, over 20% 20 in, in the, the buy for, on the Dow from the low of July of June the 3rd, et cetera. We've had some very nice, nice picks. But at the same time, what he said was, and I thought this is the only way you can do it right now. Don't get too carried away. You remember for subscribers back at 14,000, sorry, 24,800, I said, for those of you looking to add to your longer term positions, there's nothing I'm going to really follow. I'm just saying to you, I had enough questions to say, yes, now you can put in more money into the market in those IRA or care plans or whatever it is. This is the long college funds, whatever it is. But now that we've done on our actual trading position in the Dow, which I hope is a core position, which we might be able to hold longer, 
Now the only way I want to do it is to just start to get a feel for any pullback. I don't want to I don't want to step in front of a freight train where we went so nicely into the 27,000s. But I am looking at a, a lot of evidence that says right across the board, I can see enough evidence of some kind of pullback occurring that it might be very selective. So uh, it, it said here, um, maybe this last, uh, the, the question is peak C1, C2 assessment. Maybe this last run of the Dow daily can help better assess between, uh, or if there's a real C1, C2. That's a particular technique that I talk about where I'm always looking for a D, the fourth highest peak in the Chaffin wave, but sometimes you can feel just a tad under. You can do it a few times. If that happens, if the technicals remain quite strong, and in this case, you can see the MACD did go negative, but just very slightly, almost an apology, and then rallied, that C1, C2, that C2 could be like a D, and I usually put a plus sign, and you can come down quite sharply. But very often after C1, C, often enough, we saw that in the euro, remember we had... Uh, Peter from Park City we used to talk about this about two years ago, was it maybe? Started this whole thing of the C1, C2. I had always done it, but this is where I talked about it publicly because it, it's a little complicated if you don't know the Chapman wave and it gets cumbersome to talk about, but very easy to see. It's a failure, but the MACD suggested there was just enough strength, even the unbalanced volume said you could call that a C2 as if it was a phantom D, put a little plus sign on your comp, put a down arrow because a down arrow only occurs at a high. And this is not a high, this is below the left side high, and it'll pull back. So this is CVX, I'm using just an example. So in the DIA, we were, just the other day, we were right here with this doji candle. And I say, there's a chance this is a C1, C2, but that powerful move on Thursday broke out to a D, so C1, just C2 just disappears, you go back to C, and that becomes a D. And then Friday was an absolute D. This still extends the D, but now you can see it's getting harder and harder for the Dow to maintain this upward move. So it needs some kind of re-energizing. could be just timing. It doesn't have to be priced. The MACD is good. Stochastic is still at 91%. So he says, I was going to play a call option for the last leg peak D in the DIA daily, but held off because of the potential C1, C2 and could have made a lot of dollars if I did. Yeah, I agree with that. Absolutely. And that's probably the only way right now. Don't get so carried away if I say, and some kind of a short position or something. It'll be a very small position. We've got such a fantastic entrance. I don't want to mess that up. How am I going to get that again? The low of the 20, what was it, 24th, uh, well, I can't remember now, 24,820, was it? No, it wasn't. All uh, right, I'll tell you right now. It was the low of, I should have remembered this. I've done it enough times. I've got it enough times. We've got it right there. Um, oh, 28,670. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get that again at this particular point. But you can do short term, like a call, you know exactly what you're going to lose. Or you can go short, uh, like a one to one. Don't get carried away. You don't want to give away profits after such fabulous gains. You want to be right. And we'll plan that we, we're trying our best to have a program in place. To, to take it If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So sometimes we use time and sometimes we use price for a digestive phase. So that huge move up in the E-mini on Friday, look at this, comes down and look at the time we've used still. We're just about to test the low, 3,013, starts to go into the 3,011s. That says, yep, the upside's getting a little difficult, need more time and some price. But at this particular point, look at that long digestive phase. And we'll look at it again in a few minutes. So a question, I, a couple of questions I had was, so I think I dealt with that and absolutely good. I don't want to miss out any questions that I, I did get. Some I've dealt with most over now, over the past couple of minutes. Am I forgetting anything? No. Good. Okay. And thank you to those who I mentioned that they listened to my interview the other, on Saturday at 11 o'clock on Financial Sense. Um, yeah, it was uh, one of my more sort of formal ones, I um, it's just the way questions are asked, and I just answer them, uh, you know, and then sometimes you get questions in areas that you, you kind of know a little bit about, but you have to really look at the charts to be able to define it. So that was an opportunity to do that. Um, but I wasn't uh, really talking about some of the, the, the bigger things that I usually like to talk about. And there was a reason for it, because we've just had a spectacular move from the June 3rd low to this particular period. And I thought, choppy, choppy, choppy. Don't get too carried away with anything. Had a question about a, a Viavi. I think it's called Viavi Solutions. Maybe I'm wrong. V -I -A -V -A. Yeah, Viavi Solutions, Inc., trading at an all-time high at 14.63 right now. Uh, what was the question? Uh, above all time uh, resistances, yeah, there's a Chapman potential e instant restart in the monthly chart. This is fabulous, really good action. And I can't remember, did, uh, we spoke about it, and I think it did add a little bit, uh, but it didn't quite come down as much as I thought it would, but I believe it did add. So congratulations, 14.63, up five cents. It's getting a little toppy. But it has broken out to the point where that whole area of 1372 to 1341, uh, point, just a point, a little over a point below that, so about a 10 to 12 percent correction. You've got to expect something like that soon. But I, this is really good action. Everything about it says um, how it handles over the next three weeks. I'm going all the way to three weeks. How it handles support at 1340. And if it goes a little higher than this, that that support will be 1372 to 14. How it handles that whole area is going to be important. Right now, 
um, all I can say is it's in an area that's obviously in demand at this particular time. It's doing well. If you're long, just stay long. If you are getting a little nervous, and that's the reason why you mentioned it, if you mentioned just to say it's doing well, that's fine. But if you mentioned to say, what do I do now? Hey, this is a really good move. It's a good percentage move. If you want, take a little bit off, and right there, without even thinking about it, you take it off, and right now you can say, I want to buy that same uh, amount back, um, about 8% lower or 6% lower. Uh, you know, you could do something like that, or you could have a trading stop. It's a 1463. Just have a trading stop of, I'd make it, I'd make it 1%, but 15, 15 cents. Nah, it's a little too tight. 25 cents. Why? Because if you get taken out at that 1440 uh, level, that's okay because then I think it's going to be pulling back a little bit more. But if you can hold it and it actually moves even higher because it's in a favored area right now, obviously, whatever they do, then all you're doing is you're raising your exit point. Uh, it might turn out that at 1483, it pulls back and you get stopped out of 1463. You may as well have got out today. But I'm just saying, you think of it as a psychological thing because technically, I would just close my eyes and keep it on hold right now. And I would, if you, otherwise, I'd put, I'd either put a, another buy in between fourteen twenty and fourteen dollars if I hadn't had anything right now. But if I've got it, take a little other things to take a little bit off and put it in back in at about fourteen twenty for now. Maybe you'll lower it a little later on. So okay, next question Ed was GBTC. It wasn't a question; it was a statement. If I saw it. Um, yeah, in the den, it says, uh, Basil, thank you for stopping me from buying Bitcoin. Uh, good call. I had, uh, a, 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 I had bought of FOMO. F I I can't remember what FOMO is means. It's a, it's a, it's an expression. It's an abbreviation. It is an acronym. Um, out of the money. No, I, anyway, option. I had bought. Anyway, I can't. That's hieroglyphics we've got here. Uh, fear of missing out. Thank you very much. Fear of missing out. Good. Um, just remember the rectangle formation, I'd say, can last a lot longer than your patience. Have patience. And what I'd say is if it pulls back into the 1240 something area like that, close to the low that was made at 11.99, yeah, 11.99 in the second. That, that you can do a, a position, just a small position, trade it on the way up, and as it gets towards over 16, you get out of it. I wouldn't short it, but you just get out of it. And you try to do it again and again. At some point, you'll be wrong because it's either going to go much higher or much lower. But in this rectangle formation, rectangle formation is going to stay sideways for a lot longer than your patience. Um, yes, next question I had. Oh, the question I had was, yeah, what about PLD that you mentioned on Friday? Well, PLD, which is Prologis Inc. REIT, it's in, uh, I, I forgot to look it up. I had it done. It's in the industrial REITs, but someone sent me the other day, a GT sent me a whole thing on exactly what they do. And they are in, they're in the sweet spot. What do they do? They go and take, uh, make an announcement about taking over one of their rivals today. Well, I thought, well, I didn't even see that because it was holding so well. In fact, it was up a little while ago. It's still up. It's up 25 cents at 80.28. We've been long since 75, taking profits at uh, a little bit off, just a little bit off at each level. Uh, I've got it written down somewhere. Where did it go? Uh, uh, PLD, uh, PLD. We've got, we've taken off at um, a little off at 80.02, a little off at 82.20. And then on Friday, I think it was, no, Thursday, we took it off at 83.14. It's trading in 80.20 right now. I, I was hoping to keep it because the, the monthly chart is still really good. And the IYR, the REITs, the U.S. REITs, are still doing very nicely. But I don't know. I'm going to have to think this through and find out. So let me just put in here uh, Prologis and just see what it comes up as. Fear uh, and um, Logistics. Real estate and supply chain logistics is essential to large businesses today. Yeah, you know, it's, as I say, it's in the sweet spot. So they've taken over a rival. Maybe they'll be accretive very quickly. I don't know. I'll deal with it. In the meantime, uh, we've still got it. It's, you know, 
it's holding very nicely. We got a, the, the half position is remaining, half of what you bought. That's really what what I've kept it at. Okay, now here's the other thing: the XAL. The XAL is the airline ARC airline index. It's in a leg C right now, and it's broken out of resistance. I want to see this. I want to see that some part of the transportation index is doing fabulously. And this one had a low of 85. Uh, back in December, it had a high up in the 124 area uh, back in 2018. So that was quite a drop. And now it's had a very nice recovery, but not if you're looking at the monthly. The monthly needs a lot of work, but it has started finally a leg B in the monthly chart, great leg B, because I still haven't got the technicals confirming. But the weekly chart is in leg C, and that is acting very nicely. I love these new uh, restarts of the buy signal. Look, a buy signal goes to A, B minus, then another A, B minus, and then it goes, bam, it goes to a leg C overlapping all the others and picks up all those B minuses to reactivate them. So now we've got an overlapping C at 106.81. I like what I see right now in terms of what I was expecting. I'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated traded folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So uh, let's do a couple of things. Costco, I just wanted to go through a couple of the, the biggies. Costco, all-time high right now. So this is in the retail area. Uh, this is a good sign economically. Costco trading at 279.82, up 41 cents. Little doji can will be watching this closely. This is a leg E in the daily, leg F. Unless it's recycled in the weekly and G slash C in the monthly, but I, you got to wait for your signals and so forth. This is all very positive. You see how we close Friday. I want you to look at um, Goldman Sachs, which had a nice session on Friday. 
uh, giving it back today, down 277 in leg D. So yeah, as I go through these over the weekend, as I, oh, I did a lot of charts over the weekend. I didn't send as much as usual out. Well, no, actually, I sent a lot out to subscribers to my opening call. But mostly I wanted to do it for my own uh, satisfaction that I felt I was this was in my wheelhouse. I didn't want to have my, <laughs> talking about wheelhouse, once upon a time, I had uh, a car, uh, one of those common gears, you remember the little sporty Volkswagen, a little orange colored with a brown top. Oh, I love the look of the car. It was just a beautiful design. Still love it, beautiful design. And I, I had to change the wheel, uh, change the wheel, put it back on, and the next day I was off and I'm driving along. I just come off the highway, zipping as I always did. Um, and I'm on the road going to where I'm, I'm uh, the location I was going to, and I look out the window and I kind of see a, a, like, a, like a wheel on the side of the, just outside the car, and then all of a sudden the car starts to shake. I hadn't tightened the, 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 the bolts, uh, you know, the, the nuts I, like I should have, obviously. I finally found the nuts, put it all back again. I was very lucky. Um, so as I'm talking about this, uh, talking about wheelhouse, it just reminded me of something I hadn't thought of for a long time. Numerous uh, uh, survivals, uh, so just lucky to be here. 211.09 on Goldman Sachs. But wait a minute, the XLF has held well. It's giving back a little bit after making a leg E, leg D in the weekly, and out of the box in the monthly, and I like that. And I'm saying this is what we've got to keep our eye on. And I'm going to emphasize that. We've got to keep our eye under the radar, not over the radar. We want to be in areas that people are kind of being shrugging off that have held very well. This is the fear phase we're in. Remember, rectangle formations last a lot longer than patient. Look at this. Just down 250 in 2013 in the E-mini. Trading sideways all day. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom O'Brien. He's back. And I'll see you tomorrow. Check my opening call.